Hello everybody, Chris Profi, Musically Obsessed. I am here to rank Iron Maiden's eighth album from 1990, No Prayer for the Dying. Of course, this is what the cover looks like. Ten songs, a little bit different sounding of an album for Iron Maiden. So I figured I'd break it down for you guys and tell you my thoughts and rank the song. So, as I said, this album came out in... 1990 and I remember at this time you know this this followed Seventh Son which is one of Maiden's strongest records from the 80s huge bombastic everything you want from Iron Maiden so reading about this album I guess they wanted to sort of um calm that whole thing down tame it a little bit kind of get back to basics and just make more of like a hard rock album with heavy metal mixed in. But basically just go into the studio, record it. Let's get rid of a lot of the long songs. Let's just trim it down. And um, it, it, it worked for the most part. But uh, this was one of those albums growing up I never really pulled out that often. I've actually grown to really like this record. Um, is it their strongest? No, it isn't. But it's not as bad as some people were making it out to be, um, you know, throughout the years. So, no Adrian Smith on this album. He kind of left during the recording. He wasn't happy th with the direction that the band was going. I think he wanted them to stick more with the, you know, more of the heavy metal, more of the seventh son of a seventh son type stuff. So, they bring in Yannick Gers who played on Bruce's solo record. He also played with Ian Gillen. And, uh, you know, Yannick brought his own style and finesse to Maiden, which made them, uh, you know, a different band. It was different without Adrian Smith there. All right, 10 songs on this record. Let me rank them. I'm going to start with number 10, and that is Run Silent, Run Deep. There's really no bad songs on this album, but that's probably the weakest one. And listening to it over the last few days in my car, probably for the number one reason, it doesn't really go anywhere. Um, it sort of sticks in the same tempo. That sort of, it gets in that groove and just doesn't really move from there. So I kind of want it to do something else, but it doesn't. So I'm putting it at number 10. Number nine. Public Enema Number 1. I always hated the title of this tune. This is a, a co-written song. Uh, Dave Murray co-wrote it. And, uh, you know, it's got twin guitars. Classic Iron Maiden sound. It's just compared to the other songs. It uh, doesn't do as much for me. I wanted to say this too. Around this time, Bruce Dickinson started to do this like growl thing with his vocals. He didn't do it prior to this record. And it comes out in this album and it also comes out in Fear of the Dark, the album that followed this. Listen to it again. It's this like growling thing that he does. I don't know if he was trying to sound tougher or what, but I kind of like it. But also at times I kind of don't like it. And I think it's very prominent in public enema number one. All right, number eight, The Assassin. Now, this song is great. It would have been higher in my list if it wasn't for the chorus. The chorus is, better watch out, better watch out. And then Bruce is like, I'm the assassin. And then better watch out. Cheesy, but I like when it goes, assassin. Assassin. So it's a really cool tune. I just wish they would have worked a little bit more on the chorus. Number seven, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter. Now, uh, this was one of the singles off the record. Uh, written by Bruce Dickinson. Originally, Bruce was going to put it on a solo record. I think Steve Harris liked it so much that he's like, Bruce, please don't put it on your solo record. I want to put it on No Prayer for the Dying. Bruce agreed. I was surprised by that. And uh, it's it's a big song for them. It's it's I, I think it's one of those songs that comes off better live than it does in the studio. It's just a little repetitive with uh, the line, bring your daughter to the slaughter. So again, not a bad song, just a little repetitive. Number six, the one song written by Adrian Smith. So even though he wasn't, uh, you know, pictured with the band... And technically wasn't in the band at this point. He does have a song on the album called Hooks in You. 
number six, and great tune. I originally put this one lower, but it's kind of crept up as I've been listening to the album. So I'm putting it at number six. Catchy tune. Uh, I'm sensing it's about S&M. Maybe it's happening on 22 Acacia Avenue. I'm not sure. Let's move on. Number five, Mother Russia, the last tune on the album. I used to not like this song, and now I'm liking it uh, so much more. Again, I'm putting it at number five. It's one of those epic Iron Maiden songs that isn't epic. Um, think the title track for Seventh Son or Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner or Alexander the Great, but not as good. It's, it almost sounds like it should have been longer and maybe Steve Harris just kind of gave up on it or maybe he decided he didn't want a long song on there, but it's still a cool tune. I, I kind of just wish, it's, it's so cool. I wish there was a little bit more of it though. And you could hear when you listen to it, there are different sections that they probably could have fleshed out a little bit. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Number five, Mother Russia. Number four, another co-written song uh, with Dave Murray, Fate's Warning. Got a slight gallop to this tune. Love the vocal melody, strong chorus. And, um, yeah, on the, on the original album, that came in at the fifth uh, spot on side one, I believe. But, um, you know, in my ranking, I'm putting it in number four. Uh, on my list, which is, uh, it's a, it's a pretty killer tune. All right, now the top three. Number three, the other single from the album, Holy Smoke, uh, about, you know, bad preachers. That seemed to be the theme back then. Um, it's probably the theme still now, but Holy Smoke, well-written tune, catchy as hell, and uh, just classic Maiden. I love, love, love this song. Number two and number one. Hmm. What am I going to pick? Well, number two, I'm going with the title track, No Prayer for the Dying. Great song. It's one of those maiden ballads that breaks into a fast midsection. Great vocals by Bruce. A really, really well-written song. I love the interplay between the guitars. Just, uh, again, classic maiden coming in at number two. That means my number one is Tail Gunna. You're a Tail Gunna. Uh, you know, I feel like it's the best song in the album. That's why they probably put it at number one in uh, on the track listing. So you'd hear it first. But for me, it's probably the most Maiden sounding song. Maybe not the strongest chorus, but uh, for me, the whole song works. And um, it's just got that classic Maiden vibe. So there you go. 1990s, No Prayer for the Dying. Would love to know what you guys think of the album. Um, I'm hoping to pick up Fear of the Dark and then maybe do a ranking on that as well. But I kind of like to tackle these albums that sort of got lost in the shuffle along the way. All right, everyone. Have a good one. Bye.